is I've just harvested the graft for the PCL reconstruction. And uh, just for the uh, understanding purpose, I have not harvested a, a bigger graft. I've just harvested only one graft. Basic idea is to show the technique because it's a cadaver demonstration. And uh, right now, I am just preparing the bed where the guide wire has to come. I don't know. All of you are able to see the screen? Yeah, it's it's very clear, both inside and outside. Okay. Both. See now, you just I think somebody can focus on the outside picture. Yeah, there is a window which is seen the outside picture also. No, what what I'm trying to tell you, you see now I. This is the outside picture you're able to see? We can see just both Just a minute, inside I'll just show outside, you because yeah. I have kept it in a, a flexion of 90 to probably less than 90 degree. And this is how I do usually PCL reconstruction. It's on a table with a sandbag in the down and a lateral thigh support. And this is in flexion. So I don't uh, hang the leg down and do for PCL. So it's a surgeon's uh, choice how they do it. This is how I feel comfortable. So what you see here is the patellar marking. So this is a standard anterior lateral portal, slightly higher, what I'm showing you. And then here, uh, this is again a standard anterior medial portal. This is for the working and this is for the visual portal. This is the left knee we are operating. And I'm assisted with Dr. Pratima and then Dr. Alfie and Dr. Santan, both are PGs and Pratima is an orthopedic consultant. And now, um, I've already harvested the graft, and this is the post-remedial cannula, what you're able to see. So I just took the uh, telescope into the post-remedial between what I call as window one. That is, window one is nothing but, you all can see the medial femoral condyle, and you can see remnant of the PCL, which is completely intact. I have not destroyed it, just to make all of you understand what's going up, and then also to get a good orientation. And this is the ACL, which is there. So it's a tough cadaver. If you if you can see that the tissues are quite hard here, it's not a very soft cadaver. So I, I will be a little struggling, so bear with me. And this is a window one between the medial femoral condyle and the PCL. So what is this fiber? And what is this fiber? This is a anterior lateral, lateral bundle. This is a posterior medial bundle. So you can't really differentiate many a times the, uh, the junction, but definitely you can make out the lower bundles are the posterior medial, and this is the anterior lateral bundle. And if you understand, I think since morning we've been listening, majority of the PCL stability is given by this AM bundle, AL, AL bundle, sorry. So, so whatever, whenever we are doing a single bundle reconstruction, we concentrate on this bundle. Okay. And of course, recently we had been to Jaipur where the anatomical reconstruction by Rob Laprad was discussed at length, where he feels that always the femoral insertion should be double bundle and then single bundle for the tibia. That is the uh, understanding. But of course, we have literature support for both single and double bundle. That again, in what setup you are doing, what kind of a patients you are dealing with, if you are probably dealing with the high-end athletes, maybe you may have to take all those considerations. But here, so what we are doing is this is a window one and this is a window two between the PCL and the ACL. So I've not yet cleared it, but so I'll go to the postromedial gutter through this window. So I'll have to take it out because this is a tough cadaver, as I said. Just give me a time, so I'll enter. So when I'm entering, so I just palpate with my, this is just a blind procedure, but you have to feel the femoral condyle, and very next to that, whatever is the rent, you can enter there. So once you enter there, you are in the, you can feel sudden roomy feel where your uh, trocar cannula goes inside. And then for your, uh, just to lessen the time, we have already made the posterior medial tunnel. And you can appreciate, if I rotate my light source, you can appreciate the capsule where, you know, um, it, the, the, the cannula has come from. So this will help for various reasons. And Madan was talking about nice talk and demonstration in the morning. He showed that two portals in the posterior medial. Okay, this is a good uh, method because you can visualize in one portal what's happening in the uh, proximal tibia, posterior surface, 
and also one other portal for managing your suture and clearing the footprint and whatever. So what we have done is we have put a cannula and I tried to show you from here, if you have a 70 degree scope, probably you can see it very nicely. Uh, what Rob uh, Laparat has described, this picture which became so popular, that champagne glass drop. So that, that will be very classically visible. But here, I'm trying to show you from here itself. So we will go ahead and clean this. So I am keeping my shaver blade facing to the tibia, not this way, because you know the reason. This is the capsule where all the vital structures are there. So we will start preparing the proximal tibial preparation. And you can't see completely, but you can definitely feel. And if you are planning to take out the complete PCL, it's no issue. You can also use radio frequency in between so that repression is quite clear. So that is the upper surface of the tibia I'm touching upon. So now, after some preparation, what I do is I shift my telescope to the cannula, what I have put already. So that should be enough. Hold this here. Get the Wissinger rod. Take it out fully. You will keep it here. Yeah. So this is quite a tight cadaver. Things are not so easy here. Hold it there. You can take Dr. it out. Put it there. Dr. Rudra Prasad, do you routinely remove the PCL tibial attachment when you're doing No, it? I never, I never, I never remove it. Even on the femoral side, also I don't remove it. I just make. Can I come that side? So for this uh, step of the surgery, if you have uh, two uh, um, viewing uh, screen, probably it will be useful because. If I come on this side, I won't be able to see that very well. So you're seeing from the postremedial portal, and that's my wishing rod. Just I've placed it because I'll not be uh, struggling to come every time. So now let me get the shaver. If you have a thorough shaver, it's, it's very useful. Okay, see now you, you can see that the shaver can go quite down. So it's not that mandatory that you have to put uh, two cannulas all the time. You can manage with one cannula. So under supervision, I'll just go under the footprint of the PCL area. And keep the radio frequency ready. So here, some fibers are coming in the way, which I'll remove for the uh, demonstration purpose so that you get, all get oriented properly. So there are a lot of youngsters I saw in the morning. So you have to get used to these portals from the anterior medial and to lateral, especially posterior medial and lateral portals are not routine limit. Suction is not working. Can you put the suction a little bit? Saline also can be better. Rudra Prasad, two questions for you. Yeah. Uh, number one, how uh, inferior you want to go from the tibial plateau? Yeah. The root so of the if you can see some muscle fibers of the popliteus, you know, that, that you have gone quite inferior. And uh, Madan also was showing in the morning, you have this uh, champagne glass drop. You can appreciate from here also. If you go down there, so generally the measurement wise, if you use the, you can see, uh, give the PCL jig now. So how far down you can go is by measurements, probably 20 millimeters. If you go, it's a fantastic one. And you can appreciate the PCL now so nicely at the insertion. So basically you can definitely go till the lowermost fibers of the PCL. And the whole point is to avoid being very superficial. That is, 
on the top area. So if you see, start seeing here, this is the slope what we generally see in the X-ray, and the slope suddenly drops on this area. So what you are trying to see. So if I use this radio frequency, you can definitely appreciate the sudden champagne glass drop. See, from there suddenly it drops. See that? So till here I can see the bone. So probably from here till there it's maybe around uh, 10 or 15 mm and I can go. 15 millimeter is definitely minimum what I would aim for, not less than that, measurement wise. But of course when you're seeing in the arthroscope, you can definitely see the PCL insertion and you can, you can place your jig. Okay, get the jig now. So this is the jig by Arthrex. And uh, so we'll come from there only, same whatever. So I'm coming from the anterior medial portal. My jig is going. So this has got a marking. You can see the marking. So it's already 15 mm. So if I go here, probably I'm fine. Okay. And now how medial and lateral is, is another question. So if you see the medial most border, the PCL fibers, you can see very well. If you stay on that, probably you're right. Or you can try to stay a little on the lateral side. So this is almost like 16 mm, you can say. It's even more than that. And we are quite sufficiently down. So Dr. Pratima will come with the jig. Okay, go ahead. So this jig has got a nice uh, pointer here down, you can appreciate, where the wire will not come through out the jig, it will stop there. So by feel, you can go by the feel, I think you're there, just a minute, stay, stay there. You can rotate the light source, slightly go back, so that, yeah, you can see that, so you can always protect, yeah, that's enough, that's enough, you can take out this take out the jig. So my jig will be there. I'm not going to take out the jig completely. It's 8 mm we can drill. So the jig also can act like a protection sleeve so that by, by mistake you don't enter the posterior capsule. I hope till now things are clear. But any other uh, way of doing, uh, Dr. Anand, you do the same way or you have any different technique? And Dr. Niranjan, all of you can share your experience. Dr. Heyman, sir, good afternoon. Yeah, we nice have Dr. You. Gautam, Kodikal also, Dr. Heyman. Yes, here. yes, yes. They, all of us so can share. All that. of you can comment about your experience and your way of doing it while so that it will benefit the audience. Go ahead. I think Rudra Prasad is a similar thing, but uh, as far as going medial. Slow, slow, slow. Or center, what do you prefer in the PCL attachment? You go yeah. more towards the midline or more towards the medial side? Yeah, more towards the midline. Yeah. So you 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 have any difference of opinion on that? Oh, I think that's what I think, that it should be more towards the midline, medial yes. to midline kind of a border, around okay. 15 to 20 millimeters down. Off. Yeah. That's good. Anand, you go the same way. You have any difference? Uh, Dr. Rudhupasad, Niranjan yeah. here. So ah, Niranjan. How, yeah, how to uh, determine where exactly it's not it we gone are. completely. Sorry, sorry. Can come again, please? Yeah, see, uh, the when placing the jig, yeah. so how to determine you know, how medial or how center we are? So, yeah, so, no, so I'll tell you. See, uh, so, we, we discussed in the morning also that... Uh, uh, the PCL, you know, unlike the ACL, doesn't disappear completely. ACL, if you see after three months, four months, you hardly see. Sometimes you'll just see some fibrous tissue. No, no, you have to drill again. It has not gone through. Yeah. So you definitely see the the fibers. Like the way I showed in this, in this case, you, you, you saw that whole, uh, you can see it from the linear fiber so nicely from there, it's dropping down and all the way down there. So you can definitely see the fibers like hugging the tibia posteriorly. Okay. So you can identify and place your jig exactly on that. As uh, Dr. Hemant also shared, 
you can just go exactly in the middle portion of that okay thank you one more thing dr rudra prasad do you like to take your uh, tibial jig between the pcl and the tibia or you would place it on top of the pcl or do you want to take it uh, between the pcl and the tibia uh, between the bone and the remnant of the pcl go again come 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 so when you're putting in your tibial jig yeah while like, putting the tibial jig uh, do yes. you want to place yeah. it on uh, posterior to your ligament uh, remnant of the pcl that is yes there. yes posterior to or, it because see anteriorly you can't retract it otherwise no, you will have to no, destroy no. it or would you like to go between the bone and the remnant of the ligament exactly if you, if your pcl is absent or it is not there probably we can do what you say in between the remnant of the ligament and then the tibia but uh, most of the time what happens the whole pcl is intact okay so you can go ahead yes go slowly go slowly go slowly 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 the last bit in fact you can do with a hand you know because if you are uh, going with a power drill or something especially if your assistant is not used to that and they can go inadvertently and puncture that will be too dangerous the last part of it you can use a very slow controlled hand drill yeah take it out i think you are in in now good good enough take it out take out the guide wire take it out it's stuck even that is stuck <laughs> use the use the drill chuck okay. no 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 use the drill use the drill so okay. so what has happened is to the jig this guide wire has gone and locked you can see that so probably it was slightly a bigger size and it is actually meant for protection so that the guide wire doesn't pass through that but dr pratima ate a nice jamun and you know she was very powerful so it went in okay nice an thank you an expert can unlock it very well dr prasad <laughs> okay so now what we'll do is just the preparation of the tibial tunnel especially the top portion of the tunnel you try to do some kind of a uh, preparation or blunting or whatever you call reaming rasping whatever so that the killer curve becomes little smoother and there is no bony edge which can damage the graft once you pass it inside so i think it's very clear now that's the tibial tunnel okay all fine so give get the suture what we have loaded yeah anand come on sudra prasad one more question yeah uh, getting this posteromedial or posterolateral um, cannulas inside is quite challenging for the beginners absolutely and even not even beginners even the experienced persons also yeah. uh, seniors also it's quite a big challenge and sometimes quite frustrating also even yes. after you get into the posterior the compartment pump? yeah the view the fibro fatty tissues the clearing and all um it takes lot of time yes so what do you think what of you doing it? the pcl from the antero medial and antero lateral portals is it possible uh so just before uh, answering your question let me finish off this what i'm doing so that people will understand so i i put a uh, beath pin with the suture there and i've come from antero medial portal withdrawing my suture all right so the suture is out through the antromedial portal and 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 um, except next viewing through this portal how the graft is otherwise my job with the posteromedial tunnel is finished so i'll come back now so to the question of yours uh i know it is difficult but it is not impossible i think and posteromedial portal placement has to be learned by any arthroscopic surgeon because see i have seen this um synovectomies you know you can never do a complete synovectomy by uh, uh, open surgery i am sure many of the open surgeons will agree because the access to posteromedial and posterolateral gutters is always better in arthroscope so a surgeon who is deciding to go for arthroscopic training has to be well versed with posteromedial and posterolateral gutters 
and it is well established because we are seeing the footprint and everything it's better always in this approach so you have any difference of opinion no uh, dr pradeep prasad maybe i think you yeah. can briefly explain so yeah. how you enter your scope through the window one see the posteromedial capsule and uh, maybe yeah. then so basically you see this make... is this is the femoral condyle yeah. and this is the window one i would i was telling you so yeah. in this cadaver it of course it was difficult in fact uh, all of us should be very well versed going in this window it's not only for this we are talking about ramp lesion what in the morning we were hearing the ramp lesion is appreciated only by this approach right. otherwise you can never see the capsular and meniscal junction so this this window you basically uh, by chance if you are not able to see that window and opening probably you can use little bit of force but uh, you should know where you are going little bit of controlled force and you can enter between this and the pcl certainly you will land up in posteromedial gutter and window 2 it's only you know if you are passing the ligament and if it is too bulky in this case it's too bulky then maybe for suture management you may have to use it but here i am not going to use this window now right now okay oh. so probably from here only we will manage it so for the window 1 uh, place your scope there with the scope uh, present there remove the scope put in the trocar and then uh, plunge it forward from there exactly exactly so now so anterior lateral bundle as i shared it so this big bulk from here till there probably you can say for understanding purpose even though they talk in uh, diagrams nicely this anterior lateral bundle posterior uh, medial bundle all those things you can never differentiate them in practicality so but what i say in in for my understanding and for my teaching also you say 80% of this whole thing is anterior lateral bundle from here so i'm marking this area so 80% is anterior lateral bundle so in remaining 20 30% probably is your posterior medial bundle okay and see now this guide wire which is going to come here is almost near the articular cartilage you can see that articular so just probably 1 or 2 mm posterior to that because in this case we can see nicely and as the graft has to come i will prepare by the radio frequency and i i i basically create some space so that the graft is comfortably sitting uh, madan also showed that he is he is cutting this fiber so that it can accommodate the new graft which is going to come you can do all those things again your choices but majorly i think one should stick to the basic uh, things like uh, creation of the portal and suture management that's what is important so now for this uh, next tunnel what i'm going to do is give me a knife so this is a accessory anterior lateral portal which is very very low so you can show the camera here on the on the knee from outside yeah we are seeing so what you, you're able to see so yes, now yes. this is the front of the knee what you are seeing and this is the anterior lateral portal where we are viewing and from here probably little downwards and you can see identify some soft spot and then go with your knife so i'm going to cut only the skin not completely deep and you can observe my incision is horizontal it's never vertical if you go vertical probably you should go upward facing the sharp edge because your anterior meniscus is there and certainly it is at risk so i made my incision there and so keep the reamer ready get the guide wire yeah thank you everything is in this position so just show me where yeah you can see that i'm i'm using this um, um diamond tip uh, drill guide diamond tip drill from arthrex again so you can see that i will enter that spot i which i discussed now this will also give me an idea how much is the length so now the length is totally 40 mm okay it's stopping if i pull it strongly it will come out so i get me the reamer so 
So different people uh, do it in a different way. Of course, there are many ways of doing PCL reconstruction. And for the femoral tunnel, many people do it from outside in or all inside like Madan showed. And you can always see different techniques and then adapt. So now, yeah, you can see that nicely. So I'm planning to send about 25 mm of the graft, quite hard bone. Surprising break. Oh, suddenly went in. I don't know how much I went. So it's almost, so it's almost 40. Probably hope there is a cortex for my, sorry for that. Suddenly it went through. Yeah, if we can feed the suture. Dr. Rudra Prasad. Yes, sir. You, uh, at this stage, would you like to view from the medial portal or you would continue to view from the anterior? I think anterior I can, portal? I can see very nicely. Don't you think, Chetan? See, now very, very nicely I can see. And uh, viewing through the medial portal, I don't feel any, you know, I don't, I don't see any advantages. So feed the suture here. So we will feed the suture again, and then we'll pull it out. Pull it out, pull it out. Yes, stay there. So everything is happening. So because you can go on changing um, in and out, you can do whatever comfortable, but minimum the better. So there are two sutures. This suture has come from, yeah, you can stay there. No, this, this is here. Okay. So I'll bring, so now at this stage, probably I can change my portal for the purpose of, you know, managing the sutures. Hold it here. So we'll take, say, Chetan's suggestion. So what you can do, you can do however you feel comfortable. So basically, I want to send all the sutures to one area. Hold there. Somebody is holding that, that suture. Hold Okay, Pratima, give me that. This is the loop. Yeah. Yeah, you're holding that? Okay. So one of you can feed this into this. No, 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 no not like that. Hold it, hold it here. Just a minute. I think it is inside, I think. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Oh, one minute, one minute. Create it, create it. One upper didn't give me finally plastic apron. I'm getting drained. Ban I give you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now you can see that, um, so we have one suture going from tibia to the femur, all right? So that's going, same suture, whatever we parked and we got it, and this is going inside, and this, at this stage, probably you can go on, sorry, you can go on preparing some more. Uh, can you mark 40 mm there on the tape, the tightrope tape, you can just mark it. So, both for ACL and PCL, I use one thing that how to confirm the button, button, whether it is flipped or not, whether it is come out of the soft tissue or not. There are uh, four methods, according to me. So, one is by the feel of the surgeon when the button is going inside the tunnel and then suddenly it comes out. Then you, you get the feel that something is coming out. One is you can directly visualize like this. And the third is the marking, what we are going to do. Hold this here. Third is the marking. You did it. Okay. For 14. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. So you can show the graft here. Hello. You can just show the graft. So the graft, we are sending it now. And uh, to, main, to control the killer curve, you can either use some kind of a Wissinger rod or something. And you can see the marker here. 
The marker is at 40. Can you mark it a little more dark? You have a dark marker? Because Anand had nice lunch and I, I'm sure he'll face problem seeing it. What is that? Okay. So you, you made a note here? Very nice. Thank you. Okay, pull. So now we are pulling the suture threads. Uh oh, what happened? Got cut. So almost I came, but something went wrong. Okay, we are just there. But anyway, I have to remove it. So we'll have to repeat uh, once again. Just bear with me. If you're telling you that there are ways of uh, conforming, but the button, button has uh, flipped on the cortex or not. So one is the marking. The marking, when we put it, it was here. And so we slightly started pulling it. It has gone there. So that is one confirmation. Second is when the graft is going inside the field of the surgeon, when the button just comes out, that is a second confirmation. Third confirmation, of course, you can always see through it when the button is passing through. Fourth is the CM picture. And now Pratima can go ahead. Yeah. So that's the marking. We had marked it and the PCL is completely gone in now. And you can see that. So outside picture, please. So I'm almost done. And hold this here, doctor. So when you're fixing the TBL screw on this side, it will be 60 to 90 degree flexion. And one of your assistant has to put his forearm completely below the, uh, behind the proximal tibia and pull it anteriorly and give some more thirst and then fix it. 